Number 22 from the 2013 Hype Maths paper 1. Circles question. Loads of marks here. 12 marks. First part, write down the centre and calculate the radius. Because you can state the centre straight away. Maybe I'll just refer to the centre as C1. Because it's simply half of these coefficients of x and y made negative. So it'll be negative 1, negative 2. That's just a statement. And the radius will be the square root of, you can use the formula the front with the f and the g, but it's the same thing essentially as the coordinates of the centres. It's the coordinates of the centre squared, subtract the number at the end, and that happens to be a negative. So it's a subtract a negative 27. So it's going to be the square root of negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is 4. Take away a negative, it'll be plus 27, that's root 32, that's 2 sixteens. Root 16 is 4, so that's 4 root 2. Now for part B, it says the point 3, 2 lies on the circle. You didn't need a sketch, I just put it there for illustrative purposes. Because certainly to find the equation of that, I'm not going to try and differentiate this, because you don't know how to do that. No, I'll have to do it a different way. To find the equation of that, which is a line, I need a point on it, got it, and it's gradient. But I'm not going to get the gradient from the derivative, I'm going to get the gradient from the gradient of that radius. Because a tangent has to be perpendicular to the radius. So the first thing I'll do is I'll work out the gradient of the radius, which I could have called C1P. So that'll be the difference in the y-coordinates, 2 take away negative 2. Difference the x is 3 take away negative 1, which is going to give me 4 upon 4, which is 1, which means that the gradient of the tangent will be the negative of the reciprocal of that, will be negative 1. Then for the equation of that tangent, I'll put a note here, the tangent's going to be y minus b is mx minus a, using the point 3, 2, so y minus the y coordinate, 2, is the gradient, negative 1, x minus the x coordinate, 3, write it into that ideal form of y equals, perfect for substitutions and knowing what a line looks like and so on, that'll be the negative of x plus 3 plus another 2, so I've got y equals negative x plus 5, and if I need that again, I'll give that the name 1. And for part C, a second circle has got the centre, 10, negative 1. Its radius is a half of the first radius. You have to find its equation in the expanded form. And it's quite handily given you that so you can check your answer. But that wasn't really for you. That was for the marker. So that when it came to the last part and you had to show that this line was a tangent to it, it's all going to work out nicely. Well, what have we got? If that's its centre, we'll just get its radius settled first. It's a half of this. So it's a half of 4 root 2, so it's going to be 2 root 2. So the radius of the second circle is 2 root 2. So its equation is going to be this. x, I'll just set this out first, minus the x coordinate, y minus the y coordinate squared equals r squared. x minus 10 squared, y minus, so it'll be plus, that was a b, 1 squared equals, now 2 root 2 squared will be 4 times 2 is 8. 2 root 2 times 2 root 2, 2 times 2, and those make another 2 is 8. Now let's just multiply out those brackets. Square the first, square the last, in the middle, twice the product, same with the y's. Square the first, square the last, in the middle, twice the product. You might as well bring that 8 over at the same time. Then put them into the right order, squared terms first, then the x, then the y, and finally add up the numbers. And for that you've got... 101 minus 8, which is 93, as it said. Plus 93 equals 0. Then for part D, show the tangent found in part 1. I kept it over here. It's also a tangent to the circle C2 you found in the previous part. So that's the circle. We'll call that equation 2. Show it's a tangent. That means show it touches it only once. There's only one solution to the substitution. So if I'm looking for a tangent, I'm essentially looking to see what kind of intersection there is. And to do that, I'm going to substitute one equation in the other. 
In other words, wherever I see y, I'm going to write negative x plus 5. There's a y, negative x plus 5. Minus 20x, oops, plus 2 times, there's a y, negative x plus 5. Plus 93 equals 0. Now just carefully multiply that out because there's all these signs and numbers. I've got x squared plus, here we go again, square a bracket. Square the first, this time it'll be plus x squared. Square the last, plus 25. Now the product is negative 5x, so the doubling that will be negative 10x. Minus 20x, minus 2x, but plus 10 plus 93 equals 0. Now we're just going to tidy that up into a little quadratic. Well, there's a 2x squared. And there's a minus 10, minus 20, minus 32x. And these are, all, these are all positive. 25, 35, 38, 128. Take out the 2. x squared minus 16x plus 64 equals 0. Now, you could have got the discriminant and then... By showing that the discriminant was zero, you could have said it must be a tangent because you've got equal roots, <coughs> but as well just factorising it. So you've got x times x, you've got 8 times 8, and it'll have to be negative negative, which equals zero. So that means you've got x equals 8 as the only solution. But I'll not put it down that way, I'll say this. I'll say I've got a double root, which means line 1 is a tangent to circle 2. There.